all been around and doing it But now it's my time to shine and start proving it I'm losing it, I'm moving it The city is where I'm made Bostonian flow, I kick it in back day Yeah, I got game, got in a fan way We the city of the champs, every sport we play Spit wetter than the harbor, yeah, I'm flowing like the Charles I be speeding on this beat, call it turnpike miles Yeah, it's Google signing on, John to the Hancock And I'm always key, I'm ready to unlock I be doing big things Welcome back everyone to the newest edition of Once a Week. I'm Billy J. Lutis and as you guys can see, we have another incredible guest for you today. Someone who has been pursuing what God put on her heart from a young age to following that and teaching, speaking, and encouraging audiences to follow their purpose as well. She is the founder of Higher Purpose Ministries. And what we're going to dive into today, guys, she is the author of the brand new book, Repurpose Your Pain, which is coming out close to its release date, guys. We're going to talk about that. But guys, I'm extremely excited for today's conversation. I give you Cecily LaChapelle. Cecily, thank you so much for being here again. And we can talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> Oh, Billy, it is awesome. I have so enjoyed to our talk so far, getting to know you, everything that you've been doing in your life, and I'm just excited to share with your viewers what God has done in my life, but more importantly about the book that I've just released. It's exciting. Yeah, right. No, and that's what I want to dive into, and I appreciate you saying that. And you know, to give people background, I said again for a reason, because last Friday we recorded this, and it was an incredible message. I could not wait to post it, and then the technology had different thoughts in mind. So that's why we're here again, to do it with even more power. So, wow. Cecily, thank you for being here. But let's step into it. Let's dive into things. And yeah, yeah. like, you know, I want this to be the backdrop, repurpose your pain. Guys, this is a book I'm a couple chapters in already and I've loved it because it truly puts Cecily it puts you out there but mm. in such a powerful faithful way that allow people to see struggle allow people mm -hmm. to see trauma pain things that you've been through in your life different chapters mm. but all the while seeing the connection they all build to where you are now which has allowed you to write the book, but allowed you to repurpose your pain, hence the title, come out of that chapter and into such a very great place for yourself. So tell us about the book. How did it all come about so people can understand a little bit more? So that's interesting. This is actually the book I almost never wrote mm. because God had so sufficiently helped me repurpose the pain of the things that I write about in this book that they don't sting anymore. Mm. But yet times that I, I speak either in mentoring or in conferences or in a Sunday service at a church, obviously I'm going to bring in my personal experiences because that's where people really make the connection. And as I would be talking about these personal experiences to demonstrate a, either a truth from the Bible or, or a truth from life, people would come up to me afterwards and say, I cannot believe that that happened to you. You know, when you see somebody speaking like what you do or what I do, People just automatically think, oh, well, we're perfect, or we've arrived, or we've never struggled. I don't know why people have that thought, mm -hmm. but when you when you present a persona in front of people, they think, well, you, you have it all together and you always have. So when I share these stories and I share how devastating things were and how, where I am now, mm -hmm. people have come up to me and said, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. To which I thought, well, you know, I, I'm working full time. I, I worked in the corporate setting as an executive assistant. I was busy with kids and grandkids and all the things. So I thought, well, I don't know. But yet it just wouldn't leave me alone. Just yeah. the thought kept coming to me until finally, two years ago, I went to my husband and I said, look, I'm not getting any younger. Mm -hmm. And I really need to follow what I feel the leading is in my heart to write the book. But I also knew I couldn't do it staying in my corporate job. I know people who do that and God bless them. I don't know how you can really focus and write a book and have a full-time job and family and other responsibilities. I couldn't. Yeah. So I had to step out of my corporate job and just spend all last summer mm. drilled down in the writing process. And as I was writing, and I was, as I was fleshing out the chapters, I would cry all the time and just say, whoa, yeah. God, I forgot what that felt like. Mm. I was going back through old journals and remembering 
what it felt like to be in those moments. Yeah. And I was so in touch with that brokenness and the pain and the rejection and the shame and the bitterness and the anger and the, you know, the questions and all of it that comes with that, those moments. And then I thought, wow, you really have done an amazing mm. thing. And if I can help anybody achieve that, yeah. re- be able to repurpose their pain. Yeah. My thought was, you know, if you're going to go through a valley of pain, just don't leave that devastation without a revelation. Mm, that's powerful. So yeah, that's why I wrote it. I love it. No, and I, I emphasize every key point you just said, not just for the book, but to allow people an opportunity to look at themselves in a deeper way. And that's mm-hmm. exactly what you said. And I believe in the first chapter of your book, or even in the introduction, you mentioned having a... 35,000 look view onto these moments in your life. And I believe that's the healing process because that's God's perspective. I always tell my clients or an audience is like, hey, take a step back. In reality, you're looking at things from a different perspective, from a higher perspective. And to be able to do that through the uh, work uh, workbook activations you put in this book mm-hmm. for allow people to go through their own process is extremely healing, it's extremely powerful, but at the same time, to reiterate what you did in writing the book, because I'm, I'm in the process of writing my own book right now just as much, and it's, oh my goodness, the amount of time that's dedicated to it, but right? the amount of writer's blocks that throw off your time <laughs> is just as funny, but you know, at the same time, to be able to get to a place in life where you look back on life and you start to see, wow, I made it through all that, and yes. I can still smile. That's something that always stuck out to me in myself, but also other people, because I could tell my story and people are like, oh my goodness, you went through that? Like, how are you still smiling? And I tell my story now with a smile on my face. I'm laughing at the pain that I went through, not because, hey, it was a funny moment, but because I'm not there anymore. Yes. And that's God's hands on our life. And when we take the time to heal by looking Mm -hmm. back and realize, wow, I'm not there anymore. Even writing it down or as you do in the workbook activations here, taking the time to allow God to show you why you went through it, Mm -hmm. to allow God to show you the healing that was meant for you in that moment. That's, I believe, when he starts to connect the dots where all things do work together to allow you to realize I'm a whole lot better than I thought I was. And that's the beauty of it. Your book has a different perspective on our own lives. Powerful. Yes. Mm. Yes, absolutely. In the book, I take 10 pain points that are common to most people. Pain points like um, a broken identity, Mm. self-hatred, rejection, shame, regret, bitterness, weariness. That's so common these days. It's unbelievable. Post-COVID, we're we're living in a weary world. People are just exhausted by drama. But so anyway, I take these 10 pain points and I share my personal experiences Mm. with each one. And yep. then we look at somebody from the Bible who either repurposed that pain mm. or they didn't because, you know, God doesn't put all success stories in there. Right. He puts some of their failures, their humanity in there so that we can see that God has always dealt with imperfect people. God has always worked in and through broken people. So I use those examples. And then we look at what the Bible says about repurposing that pain. Mm. So in the introduction, I tell people there's going to be three steps to repurposing the pain. First, we have to acknowledge it because a lot of us, I know I did this. I had suppressed my pain so far down that in some instances for the most more extreme trauma, I actually did not remember it, Mm. but my subconscious knew it was there. And so it triggered cycles of really bad behavior and negative thoughts that I couldn't unhook myself from. Mm. I was on a crazy train and I just kept looping around and I was stuck. Mm. And so we have to acknowledge the pain, pushing it down, numbing it, um, eating our way through it, drinking our way through it, watch binge watching our favorite show through it. That's that doesn't fix anything. It just wastes time. Yep. It numbs us and it isolates us. And it, when we could be using this time to repurpose that pain for mm-hmm. our own good and for the good of the people whose lives we intersect with, yeah. that we may be called to impact. Yeah. So we're going to acknowledge the truth and acknowledge the pain. Then we bring truth to the pain because it's one, you know, so many times there are um, various perspectives on how we should get from A to Z. Mm. And 
in my opinion, the one who created me has the only right to tell me who I am and mm. how I function. Yeah. So if he knows who I am, how I was supposed to function, and he knows where I got broken, mm. then his truth is going to be the one that I need to heal. Yeah. So we're going to acknowledge the pain, bring truth to the pain, and then lastly, we're going to repurpose the pain. And you were just talking about the activations at the end of the book. Mm. That's where we do that personal, what psychologists call metacognitive work. Mm. We think about what we're thinking about. Yep. And so I created those activations with two of my very good friends that happen to be highly educated educators. One of them is a dean of students at the University of New Hampshire, and she's also a psychiatrist. And then the other one is a dean of an online school. So the two of them know how to craft questions that will take people to deeper levels of thought. Yeah. And instead of, you know, see spot run, what did spot do, spot ran? You know, we want to have some questions that really help us to start unearthing. Yeah. You know, my son Gordon, who you are friends with, yeah, right. um, he has a metal detector. Uh -huh. And he takes it to the beach or he'll take it certain places. And when he's using his metal detector, it's going to beep, right? It's going to go beep, 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 beep. And he knows there's a piece of metal there or a ring or something. Yep. And so that's where he starts digging. Yep. And so when we use the Word of God and, and this book, yep. it's going to be that metal detector that all of a sudden it's going to start beeping when yep. we get to a place where we have stuffed some pain. Yeah. And that's how we know. Okay, now I need to start digging. And the activations are like the shovel that helps us bring away, pull away all the debris, mm. all the stuff that we have been trying to fill in the hole with and right. help us get down to that nugget, right. that important piece of information. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And th there's so much power in everything Cecily just said, guys. I want you to, even if you rewind it, I want you to really dissect everything she just said. And I, I, I kind of want to start the process for people right now. Because in the first chapter of this book, and you mentioned it, it's an identity aspect. Mm, and you, yes. Cecily, you give specific examples of the identity crisis you, could, you were in at the time, right? Yes. And then you started to realize God had an identity for you. And it, mm. at the time of being a young girl, that wasn't the identity that you knew of. It was just, oh, I'm going about the way of, my, the way of life. With the society, the government, everything, family, and everything tells me I'm supposed to do. But then God has a different calling on your life. And he needs to bring us through pain points to kind of unravel that a little bit. And you know, we, touched, we talked about this in our last recording where I, you know, the symbol on my uh, shirt right now, it's the symbol for my business where it's a diamond. And I have always had the image in my mind that every single person is a light that needs to shine. Every single person is a diamond in this world. And pain comes in to smudge away the dirt so you can shine a little bit brighter. And in repurposing your pain and going through the activations and truly seeing who you were created to be, where your power lies for yourself, what gifts were placed inside you, which could be different than the person next to you, but you're able to walk it out because you're doing the work. You're stepping into the, as you mentioned, the cognitive aspect to really step into the subconscious. And oh my goodness, I forgot that was there when I was eight years old. But yeah. now I'm 40 and I'm seeing how it all connected together. But yes. now that you're 40, you can, yes, look down upon it from that golly perspective from a, eyes that want to help you heal, not from how could they do that? How could they? And, and it's, a, it's an anger that sits there for a lot of us when we go through pain. Mm. But to heal that and go through these activations allow you to see your new identity and who you were always meant to become. And I love telling people this, but then a lot of people start to take a step back and realize, like, well, if I did this work earlier, life could have been different. And I say, that's not the question to ask. Exactly. The question to ask is how can you... You were, everything works together. So you were supposed to learn it at this exact moment of hearing this message. You were supposed to look at your life now, which means every single moment, no matter how old you are in your life, is connected together to empower you now so you can use it. And it essentially just went into everything in your life. Yes, it's meant to help you grow, but it's meant to help the next person grow too. 
That's why parents have such an incredible blessing in life in raising kids because they're using all their experiences and if they use it in the right way, they start to allow their kids to grow without needing to heal from the pain that they, the parent had to go through. And if you sit there and you look at your pain and you realize, oh my goodness, I made it through that. I'm healed. I'm stronger. I'm so grateful for the pain I went through. And that's tough for people to say. They'd be grateful for the pain they went through. But then you realize that you went through that because someone else along the way needed it. And now they look to you as someone that can guide them and help exactly. them. And if you guide yes. them up a little bit higher, you start to see, oh my goodness, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, which is the yes. scripture of Romans 8.28. But you start to realize well, there's a calling on my life and it was to go through all that so all that could be used for something greater. It's powerful. Yes. It repurpose your pain does that. Very powerful. Yes, yes mm. absolutely. I think a lot of times we have the perspective that pain is bad. And it, I mean, nobody likes pain. So mm. yes, pain at face value is bad. But if, for instance, if we didn't have pain sensors, we could put our hand on a hot stove mm. and we could burn our hand and get second or third degree burns or, you know, all kinds of bad things could happen. So in a sense, pain is beneficial. It can be a warning system and all of that. But a lot of us feel like pain is bad. I just want to avoid it mm. instead of realizing that pain is going to come to all of us. Right. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, when I became a Christian, I had come out of a religious system, a, a church system where I knew right from wrong and all of that, but I couldn't relate to it. Yep. But when the day came when I was 18 years old and I got on my knees and in desperation said, God, if you're real, I need to hear from you right now. Mm -hmm. And he showed me in that moment by myself in my bedroom that he was real. So yep. from that moment on, you, if if that was the the goal was to just be with the Lord, then why didn't he do one of those Star Trek beam me up Scotty things? <laughs> but he didn't, and so therefore, if he if God left me on this planet yep. where he knew I was still broken in many areas, and that other people that I lived with and came in contact with were broken and would hurt me, if he didn't beam me up, then he knew that he had deposited something. Mm -hmm. on the inside of me that yep. had the ability to repurpose any pain that I experienced into something for my good and like you just said, mm -hmm. for the good of people that I come across. Right. I know that you and my son Gordon work mm -hmm. out in a gym yep, and right. you work with weights mm -hmm. and there's absolutely no way for you guys to build muscle any other way than adding more and more and more resistance right. onto those bars. Yep. You have to have resistance in order to build muscle. Hmm. And pain is exactly like that in our lives. It's resistance. Right. But we can look at it as it's here to crush us, yep. or we can realize that God has given us the ability to endure, to press against that resistance yep. by the power of his spirit hmm. and to press past it, repurpose it, change our perspective from yeah. this is here to crush me, kill me, defeat me, destroy me, or this came because I'm not enough, I'm a failure, um, I'm always going to lose, I'm always going to get rejected, bad things always happen to me. That's, that's the negative perspective of pain, and that will always cause us to stay stuck in the gate. Yep. Or we can look at it that I have the tools. God has given me the ability to repurpose this pain, to mm -hmm. come out stronger, yep. wiser, m hu more humble, mm. more dependent on his goodness and yep. his grace than I was before, more grateful. Yep. Those are all qualities that we need to have a peaceful and a successful life. And also to be people that won't be shaken with every little storm. Exactly. Mm. You know, yep. the, a, a, an oak tree is not shaken by every storm. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was growing up at the bottom of our driveway, we had a beautiful tree. It was called a weeping willow. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen those? Seen that, yep, exactly. I love them. They mm -hmm. always grow by the water, but one of the things that I learned about them is that they're not sturdy in storms. Mm -hmm. So weeping willows can grow beautifully, but then all of a sudden they can just absolutely plow over yeah. because of the way their root system grows. Yeah. And so if we're going to be those people that can stand the storms mm. and we can stand through life's trials, the small and the big, yep. then we have to have the right perspective 
about yep. pain. And that's what I'm trusting that Repurpose Your Pain is going to do for people, that it's going, they're going to be able to relate to the stories. They're going to say, oh my gosh, well, maybe I didn't have that exact experience, but man, I have felt rejection. Right. I have felt bitterness. Mm -hmm. I have felt that kind of anger and sadness all mixed together in some nasty soup. You know, I have I felt the chaos in my life. And to be able to be inspired and encouraged and realize that they have the tools mm. to be able to repurpose that pain right. into something that is beneficial for mm. them and for other people. Right. Oh, I love that. And I want to emphasize to listeners right now, perspective to me is almost everything. You know, your perspective on the experiences you go through allow you the lessons that you were meant to learn in them or allows you the walls that block you from what you're supposed Come to gain. On. Come and on. so, you know, and, and everything you're saying, I want to reiterate that to people where your perspective on your pain when you're going through it is not the perspective you're meant to have at the end when you're out of it. And like Cecily just said, you're not supposed we go through pain to not shake us in storms down the road. So if you go through a pain at a younger point in your life and you are able to grow out of it, you're able to heal out of it, you're able to look at yourself from a different light, then that pain was used for the reason it was meant to, to help you see things from a greater perspective, mm -hmm. from, as you said, 35,000 feet up, but also God's perspective looking down. So when I'll give people an example right now. When I went through a significant moment in my life where I was surrounded by people that I thought had my back, surrounded by people that I thought had love for me, and then all of a sudden it was as if that was gone, and now I found out these people are talking behind my back, which maybe listeners, that's happened to you before. Maybe you've been surrounded by people that you thought were always going to be there for you, and then they kick you to the curb. Going through a moment like that in my life, and then if I look to my surroundings at ground level, I'm only going to find anger. I'm only going to find pain. I'm only going to find depression and negativity. But I was at a point in my life where I was finding my own faith. So I was like, all right, I, I can't look at that anymore. What, what, why did I go through this, God? And then I started to realize, and you kind of mentioned this, Cecily, just as much, is pain to me started to become such a tool where I realized I had to get put through the furnace because pain needed to either push me to where my destiny, my identity, my calling was dragging me to. Mm. And if I did, I wasn't willing to move because I was surrounded by people that I thought on my back. Now those people are gone. So God's like, I need you to get moving. There's a higher calling on your life. There's something you need to bring to the world. But if you stay here, if you stay stagnant, if you get distracted by all this, you're not going to bring it to the world. So then I started to realize something is pain will come to push you to your destiny. God wants to pull you. So you're moving in step with him. And when you stay, I'm no longer going to focus on what hurt me. I'm going to use what hurt me for my betterment. You then start to move in step with the speed that God wants to take you to your higher calling, to what's on yes. your heart, to what's yeah. on your life. So you're not getting pushed to your destiny. You're now walking and getting pulled. And God can do that in a matter of this. But yes. it takes your inner work to really realize what are the anchors holding me down. It takes your inner work to look at life from a grander perspective, from a greater perspective, from God's perspective, and realize, oh, I didn't go through that to take me down. I went mm. through that to help me up. Mm. Mm -hmm. You have that. That's what, to me, repurpose your pain really embodies. Is it? It's a perspective shift. Uh, but it guides people to the healing perspective rather than I don't want to be like this anymore where pain is just dragging them down. And yes. to me, that's the power of this book right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And additionally, just a couple other things that came to my mind while you were talking. Yeah. So many times people feel like um, they, they feel powerless in this situation. Mm -hmm. right. And in this book, I'm unapologetically yeah. – because this is how I repurposed my pain. Mm. I am unapologetically taking this from a biblical perspective mm. because in my mind and also in my experience and the, of the experience of multitudes of people, God has designed us to be made in the image of Christ. When we accept the Lord and we accept what, he, what Jesus Christ has done for us, we become new creatures in Christ. The Bible tells us old things have passed away, all things have become new. Yeah. We have become a new creation. And so while we still have the memories, while that pain is still there, we are not the same people right. on the inside. So yeah. what does that have to do with anything? Well, when God created the earth, the Bible says in Genesis that there was chaos 
mm. hovering over the earth. Like there was, the earth was soupy. It was a mess. Mm. Everybody thinks that in the story of Genesis is that God spoke and the earth was created. It right. actually says the earth was already there, but it yep. says the earth was without form and mm. void. Right. And that's just, you know, old school ling language for saying it was a mess. It was yep. chaotic. Right. And then it says the spirit of God was hovering over the chaos. Mm. And then God spoke and he started speaking order to the chaos. He spoke light. Yep. He spoke day and night. He spoke the animals. He spoke creation. Yep. So he spoke order mm. and goodness into the chaos so essentially he repurposed the earth true yeah he didn't throw it away right he repurposed the earth and yeah. then placed us on that earth and he told adam and eve now you go be fruitful multiply take dominion right. over the earth right. so he put authority in us mm. we are not designed to be victims and yeah. that's why it really feels like bamboo shoots under our fingernails when situations come that we're not in control of yeah right it, it does not feel right yeah and this is not about us taking control of situations through um a mental power it's yep. literally tapping into praying yep. and to the, to what the Lord wants to have done in that situation yep. and to be in step, like you were saying, to be in step with what God wants. Yep. And so God does not design us to be a victim. Yep. He designed us to be a victor. Right. Now there's a path to that mm. and that path is going to be humility. Yeah, It's right. not going to be pride. It's not going to be anger. It's not going to be lashing out. And it's not even going to be something we can achieve with just the right mental thoughts. Yeah, right. It's by being connected with his spirit mm. and knowing that we're his child, right. letting him heal our heart, letting him restore the places that are broken, kind of set the broken bones, so to speak, right. and strengthen us. Mm. But for instance, when there was a, a storm, when Jesus was in a boat, Yep. And there was a storm in the sea and the disciples were all freaking out. He mm. spoke peace to the storm and then he turned to them and he basically said, well, where's your faith? Yeah, right. That's mm. amazing because what he was saying to us in that our personal application takeaway is when storms come and our boat is taking on water and right. it looks like we are going down. Yeah. Jesus has put his spirit in us for us to speak peace to that storm. Exactly. Right. So while pain in itself is never good, yeah, you can't say that divorce is good, that breakups are good, that rejection is good, that people talking about you is good, that rape is good, mm. that any of those things are good. Right. That's not what God says. God promises to take all things yep. and work them mm. for our good. Yeah. Mm. I love so, that. Yeah. Mm. That's his promise. Oh. That's, I love that. And there's a, a couple points I want people to really grasp from that. As much as the scripture itself is so powerful, it's what's in the scripture. And I think yeah. Cecily has did a phenomenal job at really dissecting that to the point where, uh, you know, you mentioned Adam and Eve and they were given dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. And then if, if you connect that to where we are now, but even when Jesus was here and he's speaking his, his words into everyone, then he's telling everyone that given his spirit, you then have the power to create to speak the, the uh, and um, cast the storm out essentially and whatnot what I have found now more than ever in this world and COVID was a major factor to it for a lot of people which you know it, it's it stinks we went through that but I, everything has its purpose so there's no doubt in my mind that was for something and I'm seeing that in a lot of people however the words that we speak the thoughts that we think where we shift our focus to the perspective as we mentioned earlier to me in my belief this is all the gifts god gave us that's what we are made out of our thoughts our mental strength right there as you mentioned your words that jesus proved could cast the storm out to heal the storm but now more than ever and i want people to take this wrong with it is we're speaking so much negativity about what we went through we're speaking yes. so much negativity about our pain. We're Come speaking, on. sadly, so much negativity about ourselves yeah. that you might not even vocalize it to people around you, but if yes. your own self-talk is so negative about yourself, 
there's a reason your perspective is only locked on to the negatives in your life. And that, to me, after being in the mental health field for so long, is what creates a season of depression in our lives. Because yes. we're so unwilling to see things from a higher perspective and speak about ourselves into a higher perspective. But sadly, we're still using those gifts your thoughts, your words, your actions, these three areas that if you truly take into what the scripture says, you are then walking in empowerment, which was given to you by the Holy Spirit to then help the rest of the world for that matter. Not just write your own story, which will be done in its own way, but use your words to build yourself up so you can teach people how to use their words to, words to build them up. Use Absolutely. your thoughts to empower yourself, to see yourself from God's perspective, not from the perspective of the world around you because the world around us is constantly breaking, you know? But if you're built up in that spirit, you don't shake just like the tree Cecily mentioned. You don't break because you're built on such a strong foundation, which is a scripture in itself when you build your house on the rock. And when you walk in that step, you realize I'm not going to be shaken by any pain or storm. And to now connect it back to the book and repurpose your pain, guys, going into the identity aspect, going into, uh, we talked about in our last recording, the shame aspect. Yes. All these areas that yeah. want to shift our perspective downward, going through the process of just reading Cecily's experience, like the, the, in chapter one, you went over a lot of experiences you had when you were a young girl with your parents going through a divorce and everything. And I'm so appreciative of you doing that because it puts your heart out there for people. And you got to a place where you were healed and you were able to realize like, oh my goodness, like this can help others. Mm -hmm. So me coming to a perspective where, you know, my parents didn't get divorced when I was growing up. However, I'm feeling your story through your words and I'm able to connect it to a similar pain in my life. That might be a yes. different story, but I'm able to relive my experience in a healing perspective because you were willing to put yourself out there for other people in every mm -hmm. single chapter. And then yes. again, as you mentioned, it's connecting it to the scripture and realize, I believe in that chapter, you you bring up Job, I believe. Um, and, and you really, the, how you were in a perspective where everything was kind of taken away as Job's story is literally that. Every, God took him away, but his faith stayed strong. And that was the purpose of his story. So in connecting all the pieces together for viewers and listeners right now, you don't have to come into this being a full-fledged Christian. You don't have to come into this being right. fully faithful in your own walk, but to come into it from a perspective that this can help me. Mm -hmm. That's and I'm not, I'm not even the author. Cecily can reiterate that she wants to. That to me is the greatest help you'll receive because one, it's going to help you heal. But then just adding the faith and the scripture to back that up can only open your eyes up to there's so much more to your life. Yeah, you, yeah. Right. I'll pass it off to you, Cecily. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things I do want people to know is that this is not a uh, a deep theology book. Mm. Right. So. I am definitely going to point people towards scriptures, but I explain the scriptures. And yep. uh, it was funny, uh, my mom, I was kind of nervous about my mom reading this book because, you know, my mom's in the book. And and some of the, sto the situations that I rehearse, mm. I didn't know if she would take it the wrong way. And so the very first phone call we had after she started reading the book, I was like, oh no, what's <laughs> mom gonna say? But she loves it. She absolutely yeah. loves the book. She's bought a bunch of copies. She's handing it out like, you know, she's yeah. handing it out to all her friends. It's great. And but her comment that I thought was really great. She said, yeah. Cecily, I hope you don't take this as a as a criticism, but your book, it doesn't it doesn't have that sort of esoteric sound to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really? Yeah. She said, yeah, I feel like anybody can understand this. I said, mom, that is actually the best compliment you could ever give me. Because when I was writing this book, I had specific people in my mind that I always saw in front of my face. And yeah. I imagined them across the table with coffee, that mm -hmm. we were just sitting down talking. And instead of, you know, thus say at the Lord, I wanted to just say, well, there was this guy in the Bible and this is what happened. And, and then that happened. And, oh, this is this, my story. And yeah, that totally sucked. You know, I wanted to make it understandable for anybody. Yeah. I pictured my book being in the airport and some businessman walking by Hudson News and he just found out that his marriage is falling apart or that his kid is on drugs and he sees Repurpose Your Pain and he picks up that book going, well, that sounds like me. And what is he, how is he going to interpret it? Yeah. Or a friend of mine who 
it, I, it was a colleague of mine and she's never been to church. She has absolutely no background in any of this stuff. Yep. Is she going to understand it? And right. then I was thinking of friends of mine that I go to church with and will they still be yeah. able to get something out of it? So I had my various audiences that I was always picturing in my mind. Awesome. And it sounds like from my mom's feedback and from other feedback that I've been getting from readers now all over the country, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, that's how they feel. They feel like this is very digestible, yep. especially the reading part. The activations are at the end. Yep. And I really hope that people will take the time, mm. not just because I wrote them, but because I want them to be able to really do the work yeah. to repurpose the pain. They right. owe it to themselves yeah. to do it. Yeah. But the reading part, the very first, you know, couple hundred pages of the book, mm. a friend of mine read it all in one night. Okay. She started at 10 at night. She thought she was going to read the first chapter. She couldn't put it down. Yeah. She read till three in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and now she's going back through a second time because she wants to start taking notes and awesome. and doing the work. But so it's, it's not this, you know, yep. heavy, deep and real theological and if, thing to read. Exactly. And that's why I want to reiterate people, reiterate to people, because to me, that's always the most powerful messages because it can connect to anyone. And if you look through it through the lens of faith, phenomenal. It's going to empower you even more. But to have not have that door closed, have that door even cracked open for that matter, and read through it from the lens that you need to read through it through, you realize, okay, there's more to life. There's more to God. I'm never, maybe someone's never been a believer, but yes. they've been through pain. And yeah. I think that's the beauty of, I guess, humanity in that sense, where our experience is what connect all of us. And for those of us that choose to go the faith route, we see the purpose in all those experiences. For those of us that are finding our way to find our way out of pain, but finding our way to a different route to look at things through, it's called connection. We, you know, we're I think we're supposed to help each other in this world today. In this day and age, that's not really happening as much in the world. But you know, it's just funny to see that and repurpose your pain, as you said. Your your friend couldn't put it down. Like I'm a few chapters in. People can read this not through the lens of, oh, this is another Christian book. No, it's it's got scripture in it. It's got power. It's written by an incredible Christian herself. However, it's just there to help you. And if you and that that to me is you mentioned you know the the activations at the end of the book, I want people to understand something is, I've read so many books in my life. However, there's not that there's only a certain few books where I actually took the information and then used it afterwards. Come I took on. notes on the information and then used it afterwards. You know they put us through summer reading every single year in school, and sometimes I didn't do the reading, sometimes I did, and I question why am I reading this? And to me because I wasn't doing the work looking backwards. And I'm sitting there, if someone picks up Repurpose Your Pain, and then you actually take the time to apply the knowledge. I think we've mentioned in our last recording just as much. Knowledge isn't power, applied knowledge is power. There you so, go. Right? If you take the activation and apply it to your own life, apply it to your pain, apply it to your experience, apply it to your perspective, you then come out 10 times better. And that's the beauty of Cecily writing this book because she took the time to do it, that to me is the effort. That to me is the spark. And then to give it to someone else, they then have this spark. Do I want to take it with me? Or do I want to leave it to the side. I think every book is like that, where it's like, I can take this information and run with it, or I'm just going to put this book down and go get another one. Yeah, yeah. Use the information in the book, listeners, viewers right now, mm -hmm. because to me, there is so much healing here. And I can say that yes. throughout this entire recording, but there's so much healing in this book that the world needs now more than ever. And that's yes. a, like it's a blessing to me that I received the book, but it's a blessing to me knowing that other people are going to be blessed by this. That's the beauty of what God's doing through this. It's awesome. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Years ago, um, I volunteered at a transitions home for women and children, and mm. most of them were women that were coming out of a drug situation. Um, some of them were coming out of jail. They were trying to get their children back, and it's a, it was a, a year-long program. And I went in and I taught, um, I, I basically almost did like a book group mm. with them where we looked at books uh, like Battlefield of the Mind and um, Never Quit and a bunch of books like that. And so we talked about scripture and how they could apply scripture and the truths that were in the book. Yeah. And to a person, the girls, the women that actually did the things. Yeah 
they made it through the program. Yeah. I could I could guarantee who was going to make it, who was yeah. going to make it through that year because it's not easy coming out of the lifestyle that they came through right. and going through this transitions program. It is a whole life change in yeah. every area. It's for their good, but it doesn't feel good when they're first going through it. Yeah. It feels hard and right. they're they're not happy and they're wondering like why did i decide to do this but i guess this is better than jail i do want my kids back but i think these directors and these people are crazy and why can't i have my cell phone right now and you know why can't i have more freedom and there's you know just all these challenges yeah. and also just issues with the women in the house sometimes and when i would see the girls that would take the things that i was teaching yeah. and they would do them mm. those were the women that always produced the fruit so to speak yeah mm. they they bore fruit the fruit of change yeah and i i've constantly felt like if we will do the work yep if we will take the time and this is an investment into ourselves exactly mm, right and so many times i think especially in today's day and age we're on the fast track yep right we feel like well i'll get to myself later i'll figure mm -hmm. this out later like yep. right now, I just need to go to work or right now I need to get a better job or right now I need to fix this relationship or right now I need to whatever. Yep. And we're so busy that we don't carve out time yeah. to think about what we're thinking about. Exactly. To mm -hmm. process what is happening yeah. deep down inside. Yeah, right. So that we can stop rehearsing yep. or repressing the pain that we need to be repurposing. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Uh, you know, that that one term or, or statement right there, thinking about what you're thinking about. Yeah. You know, I, I spoke at a school in February to teachers, college students and high school students out in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. And the, the I emphasize that point. Think about what you're thinking about, but also how much time do you actually think about what you're thinking about? And as you just mentioned, we don't we don't set time aside for ourselves anymore. And you know whether you know people have certain things that tie them down. I get it. You have work. You got obligations here or there. But if you aren't an obligation on your own schedule, if you're letting the schedule run your life instead of you running your schedule, do you really have a life? And to take the time to realize, all right, what am I thinking about? Am I thinking thoughts that guide me in a better direction? Or am I thinking about all the stress and the hustle and the rushing around and, and truly not having time for me? And I think that's where, you know, to, to not to necessarily bring it back to a faithful perspective, but God wants to meet you in yourself. He, yes. when, when you have time for yourself, whether that's prayer, whether that's meditation, whether that's walking, whether that's just you sitting on the, the back deck, just relaxing, it's a moment for you. That to me is when the revelations come about. That to me is when he speaks to you finally because you put all the distractions out and you, and you finally got silent. Mm -hmm. That's when you can hear. So mm -hmm. to me, connecting that to repurpose your pain, it's everything you just said. It allows us an opportunity to think about what we're thinking about, but to think about what we went through. How can I repurpose that to now empower me? So it's no longer pain driving me. It's love for yourself. It's joy for this life. It's peace that you finally have because all the, the rage or the negativity that could have been there before is now healed. So the waters are calmer. Just like the storm you mentioned that Jesus spoke and it was, it was gone. It's the waters are calmer. And when we're able to heal that storm in ourself, yes. we then are able to see life from a whole new perspective and to emphasize the perspective I believe we're always supposed to have. Yes. Because that's seeing the world through a greater lens. And yes. like, it's awesome. It's incredible. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Jesus said, um, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, do yeah. I give unto you. Right. And his peace is a peace that he said passes understanding yep. or surpasses. Like it, it's, it's higher than mm. our understanding. Right. And so we can be looking at everything burning down in our lives. Yeah. And yet he promises we can still have a peace, a mm. peace that he is, he's got me. Yeah. He's got us. He, he knows our end from our beginning, that yep. he's going to be working all things together for good. But without that, without that relationship, mm. without being able to take the time to learn how to hear the voice of God, right? whether you hear the voice of God as you're walking in nature or at the beach, or for me, I nothing happens if I don't have it on my calendar. It mm. just doesn't. Yeah. And so I've had to calendar in healthy habits. 
Yeah. Mm. So I calendar in, I schedule in my time to work out, my time to read the Bible and study the Bible, my time to be at, at prayer, my mm. time to be with my husband and have focused time just with him. Yeah. I, I schedule everything in my life. Yeah. And the reason I actually schedule my time to sit with the Lord is because everything else will take priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I don't schedule it, everything else will crowd that out. Yeah. And so that for me is how I've developed a healthy habit of having scheduled time. Sometimes I'll sit there and it's not very special. It's kind of mm -hmm. like crickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then there are other times because I showed up yep. because I was there, yep. I'm writing in my journal and there's this like download. Yeah. of wisdom and revelation and, and some like insight about me or insight into a situation that I, I am just not that smart. There's yeah. no way I came up with that. And as yeah. I'm writing in my journal, I'm going, whoa, mind blown right now. Yeah. And that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't there. Mm. Yeah. It just wouldn't have. I love that. Mm. Not so, I, I love it. And I, I didn't mean to end that thought. It's just, oh my goodness, no, it's good. powerful. And you know, something that, always stuck out to me when I was, you know, growing faithfully, growing spiritually, really understanding all this concept is, and this connects to the book just as much, is one, finding the present moment where you can just be, you know, that that's mm. the great I am, just, and just be here. And, but to me, being here in the present moment has now become the greatest struggle for 99% of the world. Come because on. No one, everyone now is living in the future because anxiety and worry and stress and oh my goodness, how am I going to get that done? Mm -hmm. Or everyone's living in depression where how could that have happened to me? Like, like, oh my goodness, why, why, why? But if you really sit there and I did this at a, a workshop, I did it. You take the past, you come here. You take the future, you come here. Well, we know what that symbolism is right there in a prayer, but you find the presence in the present. Yeah. So if you take the time to be with you, Yes, being with the greater just as much. But get setting time aside, as Cecily just said, for her and her husband, for herself to journal, for working out, whatever it is, you need to make you a priority in life. Because if you don't make your life a priority, you do not have a life anymore. Because mm -hmm. everything else is going to take it from you at that point. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I think being in the present moment is something we need to teach people now more than ever. Because one, you find the presence there. But two, you're no longer rushing. And when we mm -hmm. stop the rushing inside and the stress inside and the worry inside, you realize that life is pretty good. You yeah, know? Yeah. Everything yeah, around yeah. is pretty good. And, and you start to see, okay, there's a lot more to this than just my schedule and the rushing around. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. I love it, Cecily. I love it. And, um, uh, I just wanted to read one little part from the preface because, um, actually, I wanted to, the, from the introduction because it, it talks about exactly what you just said. Oh, phenomenal. <laughs> All right. So I said, for, for many years, I tried to stuff the pain of my past so far down in my conscious mind that I couldn't pull up the specific memories, or so I thought. I tried to numb my pain with substances and food. I tried to silence my pain by filling my life with noise, always having the radio or the TV on or keeping myself so busy that the pain wouldn't have any airtime in my thoughts. The problem with these techniques, besides the fact that they don't work, was that I wasted precious years running from the pain that I could have been repurposing into testimonies of God's faithfulness and tools to help set others free. I wasted long nights fighting the voices of shame and bitterness that told me that I was a failure and a joke and that I'd broken my life beyond repair. I wasted opportunities to make lasting memories by not truly being present in the moment. I wasted the possibility of deep friendships by always being guarded and isolated. Mm. But thank God I began a relationship with Jesus that slowly chipped away at the walls I had erected to protect myself. Gradually, I learned how to grab onto God's goodness and carry it into my painful places. And so um, I, then I go on to talk about how in the book I've been brutally honest and vulnerable mm. so that people can relate to, the, to my stories. When I started to write this book, I thought, you know what, I'm either going to really be like very vulnerable, uh -huh. kind of like walking through the mall in your underwear, uh -huh. or, or I'm just not going to write this book because there's no point. There's no point candy coating things or pulling out pieces of my story that mm -hmm. I might feel uh, make, might make others look at me differently yeah. or that I might wish had been different. 
Mm. Because at the end of the day, I have a testimony. I have a testimony of God's goodness overcoming my brokenness. Mm. And if I don't tell it like it is, then I am diminishing yeah. the magnitude of what God has done. If I don't yeah. talk about that date rape, mm. even though I don't want to talk about it, right. then I diminish the glory of what has happened in my life. Yeah. If I don't talk about my divorce, my affair, my addict kid, if I don't talk about these pain points yeah. in my life, mm. then I am doing a disservice to what God has done in my life. And I'm, yeah. I'm invalidating right. my story. Mm. This is my story, the good parts yeah. and the bad parts. Exactly. Mm. And I need to tell it like it is. 100%. So, I oh, I love that. Relate. Yeah. No. Oh my goodness. I love that. I, that to me, the vulnerability factor is what empowers this book even more so. And like I said, I, I read the first few chapters and I'm still reading it obviously, but it's, that's what connected the dots for me with mm -hmm. what I've gone through. So when someone is willing to step up and be vulnerable in their story and Hey, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This happened to me. It allows everyone else to realize, Oh my goodness, I need to hear this. I need to read this because I, they might not be willing to be vulnerable themselves, but they can learn from someone that is. And that's the beauty of life is we need to have our story out there for people. And obviously it's tougher for some people, but to be able to put yourself out there connects you and can help other people through your story. So I say yes. that in reading the book, but I also say that to listeners and viewers right now, I'm not telling you to take your entire story and throw it out there to the world and whatnot and post it all on social media. I'm not saying that, but if someone comes along your path and what you've been through can help them. Mm -hmm. That is not just healing for them, that is healing for you. That is you repurposing your pain, just like an activation this book can do, but that's you using your pain with, you know what, I can help them. You're being, you're opening your heart up like, hey, I did that, I, that happened to me too, I did this, but I didn't stay there. Yes. That's the beauty of vulnerability. And you, you definitely did that, Cecily, in this book. And I, I, I thank you for that because it created such an empowering book for people. Now, I want to connect to people right now because it's about to get released. I was lucky enough to get a free copy. But So tell people, when does it get released, where can they find it, and how can they purchase it? Because I know there's a couple different options right there for people. Yes. So right now we are in the advanced copy pre-sale stage where I, as the author, have the only copies. <laughs> and so they have to be purchased directly from me. So I set up a square shop. So it's all, um, you know, there's, there's all the safety for your purchase and all of those things. And I don't resell anybody's information. And so they can go to the square shop and you're going to post that link mm -hmm. and they can, um, buy t-shirts they can get the book and i can ship all of that out to them and then october 4th they'll be mm. able to purchase the book through amazon barnes and noble um their local bookstore all the places perfect yeah oh that's awesome and then give the added caveat of people that buy it straight from you because i got an autograph of mine <laughs> you know? yes 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 of course of course if you purchase a pre-advanced copy of course i'm going to sign that for you and you're going to get a bookmark and uh, you might also get a couple little other little swag items in your in your bag. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, you know, to close this out, Cecily, I thank you so much for your time and everything. Last two questions. One, you know, actually, I guess last three questions. I know you do higher purpose ministries. I know that's something that's coming about just as much where I think the book adds to it where you're <laughs> soon enough, you're going to be traveling. I have no doubt about my mind. But Tell people a little bit more about Higher Purpose Ministries and then tell people where can they find you. And then if all that wraps into a final message from you, by all means, let it ride. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, so um, it is Higher Pursuit Ministries. Dude, You're so okay. close. But you got purpose in your brain because of the book. The um, last so, recording, I got it. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so it's Higher Pursuit Ministries. And so I, I speak at conferences. I speak at our church. I've spoken at other churches in Costa Rica and... Um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the other country where I've spoken. Somewhere else. Um, and oh, South Africa. There we go. Um, awesome. So it's been it's been incredible to grow and all of that. I mentor people, and so I, I like you said, I, I know there's going to be more traveling. I'm 
open to do conferences and to speak to small groups, large groups, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's about this book, I also have a YouTube channel, so there, my messages are on that YouTube channel. So if people are interested to hear what else I talk about besides mm. repurpose your pain, there's other material there. They can find me on Instagram and on Facebook, and I have a website. Mm. And then um, you will also be able to go to the book landing page, which is just for the book, separate from my website. Perfect. That's awesome. No, I love it. Yeah. And guys, I'm going to put all those links to everything at the end of the credits right now we're about to see that but at the same time they're going to be in the youtube description so if there is whether that's a social media page whether it's the website for the book whether it's the book link page itself guys you're going to have access to it right then and there go check it out see what this book is all about see why we got together to really emphasize the key points here because i'm telling you guys october can't come soon enough but grab your copy now because there's so much power here and well, truthfully why would you put your own healing or someone else's healing on the back burner why would you push it down the line instead of right now? And that's the beauty of this. This is your time. This is your life. Do you make the opportunity and choose, I'm going to heal now, or I'm going to do these activations and heal now? The power is in the palm of your hands, guys, which is phenomenal. It's right here. But that's your choice. But you're going to have access to every single link, every social media page at the end of this video and the YouTube description. But Cecily, tell us, what's a final message you want to leave with people before we close all this out right now? The final message is that God is good. Mm. He cannot be anything other than good. Mm. And so if in your mind there's a lie that says that because of what you've been through, God isn't good, or if he is good, he's just not good to you. Mm. I want to let you know that is a lie. And lies can be believed in our hearts just as easily as the truth can. The only way that we can discover the difference between a truth and a lie is by going to the one who made us, king of the universe, creator of everything, and to ask him to reveal the truth to us and to reveal our hearts to us and to be humble enough to admit we might not have the real answer mm. and to be humble enough to admit that God just maybe does love us. Mm. And I think that's the, that God has gotten really bad press so my goal always, when I say higher pursuit ministry, it's that pursuit of more truth, of more intimacy with the Lord, more knowledge of him, to fall deeper in love with him. Because on my own, I am a mess. On my own, I am an accident waiting to happen. But connected to the God who has created everything, mm. he says that with him, all things are possible. Right. So that's my final message. God is good. He can be nothing else but good. Yeah. Talk about a perfect period at the end of this video. I, I love that, Cecily. Guys, take that message. Take everything we said today and use it in your life. Run with it, yes, but also take the time for yourself to absorb it. If there's a part in this message that really hit home for you, go back right now, rewind this video, listen to it again. Let that sink in just as much as a page in Repurpose Your Pain can do. But if something we said today hits home just as much, that's a sign to you that there's more here. See what that is. Dissect it, absorb it, think about it, listen to it, and really sit on it for that matter in your own time, as we said, and allow yourself to heal but move forward. That's the that's as much as repurpose your pain is so powerful, guys. That's why I wanted to make sure Cecily was here to talk about the book, but at the same time to help you all. Because that's the goal of once a week is to help people. And I think repurpose your pain is doing that. Every activation in this book is doing that. It's helping people. At the name of the game, that's why we're here. But Cecily, I thank you so, so much for being here. It's been a blast again. Yes. You know, <laughs> this recording comes <laughs> through. Hopefully this is a great one. <laughs> but no, I appreciate your time, Cecily. Thank you so much. It's awesome. Oh, it was so great. It's always great chatting with you. I mean, we could chat for hours, right? I think we have, so. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy our conversations very much. It's a blast. No, I, I love them every second. No, I'm just right there with you. But I thank you so much for being here. Guys, please like this mess on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button below. So if that number goes up, we can get this to more people so we can help more people. That's the purpose, like we said. Mm -hmm. But also, if at any point in this video, someone popped into your mind, 
That is a clear cut sign to you that that person needs to hear this message. Share it to them. Not to spread us, not even to share the book, but to help someone with this message at the end of the day. And please, if you have not already, please subscribe to Once a Week on YouTube so we can get that number up and continue to help as many people as we can. But guys, like I said, all of Cecily's links, the links to this book are going to be in the YouTube description. It's going to be in the credits of this video. You're about to see them. Go check it out. I have no doubt in my mind this book can help you. It can help anyone you buy it for, for that matter. Lend a hand to someone and get this book to them. But lastly, Cecily, thank you so, so much for being here. It's been a blast. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. <laughs>